All right, I'm Kurt Thompson, and we're taking a look at something that's actually in two courses I have. My brand new commercial trumpet course and my eight-week lead trumpet course from a good five years ago. And that's the work on the most commonly missed intervals, which also happen to be the most common intervals. And today we're looking at lead trumpet accuracy study number eight. And it's the interval of a fifth. It happens a lot. Uh, they tend to be missed a lot. And we're going to put it on a medium swing tempo, which is 138. Pretty close. Did I get that? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if you if you want to go into the studio and be a session guy, um, if you want to do you know what work up, let's say you want to do the Grammys, the Academy Awards, the Emmys, or do any of those shows like that. Uh, let's see what else. Um, anything high profile. You're gonna to want to practice something like this. You're gonna you're gonna to have to really develop accuracy. And um, no one's perfect, but you want to get as close to perfect as you can. So that let's just say that 9.5 times out of 10, um, you'd like to really be um, have that average. You know, like you're batting 950. Can you imagine that? You're batting 950 when it comes to playing above the staff. I mean, we can't. Not like Major League Baseball where a 300 average would be okay. You know, you miss seven, 70%. Uh, we, we can't do that here in this game. And so uh, how do you combat the fact that um, some of these intervals, uh, once they get a bit of staff, they're, they're going to increase the likelihood. Oh, yeah, I'm here, by the way. <laughs> they're going to increase the likelihood of you missing notes or cracky notes. And... Even just winging it right now, you heard me kind of um, spee off one or two. Uh, but basically, if I was in a performance, uh, I think I would have been happy with this, and the crowd would have been too. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm peeling some paint right now and got a good sound. In the studio, uh, all of this would have been probably pretty good. I probably, they would have had to probably have me go back and dub in one or two of these. And uh, big deal, you know, I go back and do it. <laughs> Pop it in, take, you know, two or three attempts, boom, boom. You know, a couple of minutes, it's all perfect. So either way, I'd be pretty happy with what I just did here. Uh, if I was in um, some New York studio or L.A. studio, be very happy with what I just did. Uh, now, you can make this harder by taking the the um, mouthpiece, the whole horn off your face and coming back in as if you were resting uh, during a, you know, an eight, an eight bar singer thing or an eight bar uh, improv, maybe a sax had an improv solo or whatever you can, you can think of and you weren't playing and you, then you have to pick up your horn. Now that's harder. So you, uh, just to give you an idea, uh, if you're going to look at, um, let's see the last one, what do we have? That would be pretty hard. Uh, let's just say there's um, four measures before you got to do the C sharp to G sharp. Hold on. Two, three, four. Yeah, you know I mean. <laughs> what about the um, the D to the A? You know, what if you had four measures? 
violins and you're in the orchestra and the Academy Awards and whatever, and you, you know, you're cold for four measures and you got to come in. baby you see okay where are the f i'm at new york la doesn't matter that was gold that was bullseye solid gold baby and you actually have to, that's a skill you actually have to practice that uh, of course when you get under a duress and stress you know i'm here in the comfort of my little my little man cave back here because i'm playing when i start playing above 120 decibels i mean it goes out of the house, rattles the windows, and disturbs anybody, including, you know, my puppies. And um, so I knew I was going to be playing extra loud. So I came back here. I just didn't want to, want to bother anybody, really, and, and hurt my uh, puppy's ears. So uh, it's really, really loud. And But anyway, uh, so, you know, I'm kind of comfortable back here. Uh, but what if I was in a tux and it was like, you know, choking me, you know, with the bow tie on and... I was warm and you got all the lights and you look out, there might be, you know, 200 people, a thousand people, uh, or some of these big conference events, 5,000 people. You know, if you do some of these fundraising, the things that are going to be coming up with the, uh, Democrats and the Republicans, I've actually played a couple of those before you, you feel a little, a little something, you know, a little butterfly, you know, you, I mean, you, you just got this one thing to do and you got to get in and get out and you're in an unfamiliar territory. So that, that factors into your ability as well. You might as well stack the odds in your favor and be working on these common intervals that are going to come at you. Uh, the, I'm here to tell you they will come at you. And they will come at you at the time when your chops are a little tired and when they can be a little scary, like what I just did. Just imagine in a real show, four measures, and you got to come in on a D to double A. Um, I mean, you got to be on the money, baby. You got to be practicing this stuff. You're not just going to come in there and, and think that you did a little bit of Max Schlossberg and that maybe you popped out a couple of uh, what the, some of the Claude Gordon arpeggios and you're going to come in there and nail it. That No, uh, you, you are not going to nail it. You got to be practicing. You got to be uh, prepared, you know. Um, heightened, what do they call paranoia? A heightened state of readiness. You need to have a heightened state of readiness for this kind of stuff. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. This is just a little sample. Um, I have to confess, I don't work on these all the time because right now I'm wearing a different hat. I'm in creative mode. I'm not in grunt playing mode, you know. I'm in creative mode creating a lot of this um, video, a lot of courses. And um, otherwise, I would, I probably would have said, hey, yeah, I just did this two days ago, you know. I got to be honest and tell you that I haven't done this one probably for months. Um, anyway. If you're interested in playing and playing a lot, you need to be doing this um, regularly. And this is just one. I have tons of them. I don't know, maybe close to 20 of these uh, different intervals and licks. They're not all just two notes. So, you know, I got some little phrases that are pretty common that people screw up a lot. So anyway, you might want to just take a look at what I got to offer you. If you're interested in just becoming a better all around player. And if you're interested also doing commercial music or um, jazz and lead, I'm Kurt Thompson. And uh, I think you know who I am by now, but anyway, I just thought I would remind you. I hope you got some value out of this. I'll probably put up this chart here. I'll just um, I'll splice it in the video somewhere so you can actually, you know, watch the, the rhythms as I play. And then, you know, you can, if you want, go back and, you know, try to play along with it. So these are, you get a PDF of these. Uh, you get a PDF and then you could also print them out if you like. I got them nice and big. I did that on purpose. So, you know, you, know, you can easily see it. So... Um, see, so I'll put it up in the screen when I go back and read the video and, uh, but anyway, we've got a collection of, I don't know, 15, 20 of these and you work on these all the time and cycle through them. You'll just have the confidence. You'll be used to seeing some of this stuff. Another thing is people get people that actually have developed their range, but don't play this. Guess what? You might have developed your double A, but when you see it written, let's see, where are we? Yeah, if I can get it there. If you see it written, or maybe where are we at? Right there. Yeah, if you see that, you know, some of these high notes in the ledgers, that intimidates some people and they get scared, so they miss it. You know, you psych yourself out. You can, you build up the range and then you actually start seeing the stuff on the page. And if, you know, if you're not used to it, you can uh, psych you out.
You know, you can get worried about it and you can make yourself actually falter. Kurt Thompson, TrumpetSizzle.com. I hope you like some of the stuff that I do. You know, I'm pretty much doing it all, you know, on my own dime. So if you'd like to chip in, um, you can get involved with some of my courses. You can get involved over at Patreon.com, Patreon slash, or Patreon.com slash Trumpet Sizzle. Um, you know, give back a little bit. I think it's good. We, we give, we take a little bit. I tend to do a lot of giving um, in the music world. You know, I'm coming up on 1,400 free videos, and a lot of them are golden, golden, and with a lot of value, like this one. I hope you, that you enjoy that. So like this video, comment, um, say something nice. Um, I'd say something meaningful if it doesn't if it's not going to be nice it better be meaningful um share it with um, somebody else you think that you know might get some value out of this so it's quite a valuable study right here and i'll catch you the next one bye bye <laughs>